Hello there, and welcome to the stage years dressing room in the West End. My name's Christopher Howe. I play Dr. Dillamond in Wicked and sometimes the Wizard, and I'm having tea with Wilma. How would I describe myself in five words or less? Um, a pickle. Probably. <laughs> I know, because cause you could sit there saying, you know, creative, introvert, shy, do you know what I mean, artistic, temperamental. I'm probably more than five words, and so because I'm probably more than five words, it's all a mess, so a pickle's a good word. However, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not certifiably insane, but I'm probably as complex as you are, Wilma. I, uh, if, if I'm, because I'm playing the wizard at the moment... I spend most of the half hour call um, talking to Glinda, Gina Beck, discussing the important issues of the day, like, you know, price of aubergines, things like that. And um, if I'm playing the goat, I sit and I, I bleat a lot. I, just, I, just, I sit and I, I articulate and bleat, because you've got this mask on, so you have to make sure you're, 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 your mouth's working. And I just, I just intone, meh, meh, meh. As a goat, yeah, just just really realistic actor. Nothing really goes wrong in Wicked, but um, in Betty Blue Eyes, um, a few times the pig would go on strike. And so you'd be singing a song to the pig and it would just be... And you'd be, what do I do? So you sort of, I'd just sort of stand in front of it and say, oh, there's Betty, she's all right now. She's having a sleep. Yeah, that, that used to be quite bad. That, that's when things really gone wrong, wrong for me. I, I, I feel like I've been really lucky. I've had many hit mishaps on stage. Yeah. It's happened to me, like in Chicago, in the letter scene. Billy Flynn many times will come on without a letter and then dry, and then I'd have to ad lib around it. That happened quite a lot. I was Amos. Yeah. Hey, Andy, I got, I got this uh, dry me. Uh, are you talking about the letter you told me about on the telephone, Mr. Flynn? Yeah, the letter that says, uh, dry. Is it the letter about my wife, Mr. Flynn? Yeah, it's about your wife. She, uh, dry. Does she want to divorce me, Mr. Flynn? That's right, she wants to divorce you, Andy. My favourite song in this show, um, my favourite musical sequence is the Wicked Witch of the East scene, I think that's absolutely brilliant, I think it's just got every, that, that you could take that out as like a, a little five minute opera, couldn't you, because it's so well written, um, I think the way Gina Beck sings popular is a masterclass in comedy, I think the way Rachel Tucker sings No Good Deed is a masterclass in acting through song. to Matilda and the Lion King. So I'd like to be a pig or a woman. Yeah. Hairspray, definitely. Because I loved that. I loved that job because I could eat what I wanted to eat. Um, I wasn't on I wasn't on every night which I found hard. And I just got to dress up as this fabulous woman. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I'm not I'm not a I don't think I'm a transvestite, and I'm not a drag queen. I don't think I want to be a woman, but that escapism for that two and a half hours is brilliant. And I think also the, the, the journey that the, the show takes an audience on is amazing, you know. And lucky enough to be working with Chloe Hart in, the, in, in Wicked, actually, who was, who was, <coughs> I was sometimes her mother in Hairspray. And she's, yeah, we, we, I think we both jump over, you know, burning cars to do that show again. It was amazing. Burning... I don't know, Bernie Stiletto used to do that show again. It was amazing. And I'd also like to see Betty Blue Eyes come back. I think that opened maybe at the... Uh, <clears throat> slightly the wrong time. I, it kind of feels... That, I don't know, maybe in a year earlier or something that might have done better. But it was just, that, again, an amazing experience. An amazing cast. Cameron threw so much at that show, you know. And, you know, he really, he really... He really believed in it and loved it. And I think, you know, ultimately... You know, maybe it got to, it became too much. You know, it was just it was an again Betty Blue Eyes being in a 
being in that show with that production team at the beginning and watching, work, seeing the way the show developed and grew was just an incredible experience. The last show that I saw was Matilda. It's fantastic, isn't it? I think it's just incredible, the staging, the concept, the performances, just and crazy for you as well, as the show was sort of just before that, and I thought that was brilliant, and how wonderful that that show got to transfer, you know, albeit it got, it went a month earlier, didn't it, or something, but how wonderful that, you know, people got to see that glorious choreography and those performances, they were brilliant. Well, I mean, the anthem of all time has got to be, it's got to be One Day More, isn't it? From uh, Les Miserables. <laughs> from, uh, from, what's that show? Um, but I think You Can't Stop the Beat is the greatest ever finale of recent years. And that's not because I was in it. It's just a brilliant, brilliant... I've got that one. I go running a lot. And uh, if I'm flagging, I've got this button that says Hit Power Ballad. But I <laughs> so stage it. I hit You Can't Stop the Beat and I do, I do speed up. I just love the way it builds and builds, and, and it introduces all of the all of the principal characters back into into the into the song and into the story. It kind of ties everything up, but it ties it up through sort of a, a pop song, you know. So there's it's narrative, but it's it's just it's just genius, genius. <laughs>